Hey there Dev Squad, Vertus here and within this episode we are going to be covering references, something which is essentially just an extension of pointers. Having said that, if you haven't seen my last video on pointers, I definitely advise you go ahead and check it out, the link for which is in the description. For now though, let's go ahead and move on to an introduction to pointers and how they can be used inside of C++. Pointers and references are very much the same thing in terms of what they do. They both allow you to access data. Pointers allow you to reference variables in memory address form and references let you reference those variables as is. Having said that, pointers and references are both pretty much going to be doing the same thing. However, the way that you're going to be creating them is going to be semantically different. So having said that, a reference is just a way to reference an existing variable, whereas a pointer can be set to null or to zero, something that you can't do with a reference. With references, they do need to have variables which exist already. References themselves are not new variables. They do occupy memory and they are pretty much just an alias to a variable in your code. So having said all of that, let's go ahead and move on to creating references in our code. And as we create these references, we are going to extend exactly where you're going to be using these references and how you're going to be using these references. So what we're going to do is start off by creating a variable that we can use for testing purposes to get our reference to reference to. So having said that within our main function, we are going to make sure this is nice and clear. Once we've done this, what we're going to be doing is int a equals to and then 69 and then we're going to end off that statement with the semicolon. So what we need to do now that we've got our variable that we want to reference, what we're going to be doing is creating our reference. To create a reference, what you're going to be do is starting off by defining the data type. Now like I said, with a reference the data must exist already. Having said that, you need to make sure your data type is correct. Now with us using an integer as the data type, we are going to be putting this into our reference. So int, and then what we're gonna do next is follow it up by the ambersands. Now what you are going to notice is when I'm creating this reference, I am putting the ambersands in here. We are not doing it in the same way as we would do with a pointer, whereby the ambersands is essentially going to allow us to reference the memory, by using a variable name. This is going to be completely different. So let me go ahead and show you a reference with a pointer. So what I'm gonna do is when we're creating a pointer, we're gonna do the data type followed by the star. What we're then gonna do is give the pointer a name and then set this equal to a variable. And this variable is going to be the memory address that we're looking for. So what we'd use is the ambersands operator to set this into what we need. So we do ambersands and a and then we'd end off that statement. So the ambersands here is actually going to get the memory address of a. The use of ambersands here and the use of ambersands in our reference is going to be different. So just ignore what you've been taught with a pointer for now. So going back to our reference, if we want to create this, what we're going to be doing is moving on to the reference name, which is going to be reference. And then this is where we're gonna define what this reference is going to be equal to. Now, like I said before, this has got to be equal to an existing variable. So what we're gonna be doing is setting reference equal to A. And as you can see, based on the code that we've got here, all we have done is essentially created an alias for A. Reference is not a second variable. Reference is just a way for us to call A. So essentially, it is an alias and that is it. If we were to compile our code, we are not going to have two different variables. We are just going to have A and then we're also going to have a reference to A that we can use later on. We're not going to be taking up two pieces of memory. We are not going to be taking up any storage space for this reference, it's just an alias. So one thing that I do wanna mention is that when you declare your reference, that is going to be it in terms of changing it. You are not going to be able to change a reference when it's done. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's say we've got int 
reference equals a. If I was to try and set reference equal to another variable such as b, what's going to happen is it's actually going to be setting reference which is essentially calling our a function equal to b. So if we was to have our int b equals 52, what would essentially be happening is a is then going to be set to the value of 52. So both values are going to be set to 52. You cannot change a reference once you have declared it. It has got to stay with the same variable. Now there is workarounds for this using pointers, but that's something that we're going to be going into later on in this series. In addition to this, you cannot also create a reference which has not been defined. So what I mean by that is what you can't do is simply int ampersands and then just say reference test and then just end it off there. You need to set this equal to a variable. So having said that, you need to give it the data by setting in equals and then a variable name such as b and from there you can then use that as your reference. So you are going to start to understand some of these little rules with references as you get to use them more and as you experience these errors. But for now, that is everything that you need to know about creating references in C++. What we're going to do now is move on to how you can use those references in your code, so how you can call them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the next section. So now that we know how to create a reference, let's move on to how you can use them. Now, using a reference is going to be just the same as you would with any other variable. You are going to be typing it into your code in the exact same way. So let's go ahead and create a line of code printing a reference onto the screen. So what we're going to do is std colon colon c out and then with this we are going to try and feed in the value of a but we're going to be doing this through the use of our reference that we've got here. So having said that all we've got to do is type in reference and then from there what we can do is just end off that print onto screen with std colon colon and then end line just like that and then end off that statement with the semicolon. So essentially what this is going to do is take in that reference but that reference is equal to a so it is going to print on the value of a onto our screen. So if you go ahead and run this through the local Windows debugger, you are going to see it is going to print onto the screen the value 69. And there you go, you can see it there. Now just to show you that using a reference is just an alias, what I'm going to do is replace reference with a and then I'm going to run this through the local debugger again. And what you're going to see is it's going to say a on the screen because reference is essentially just exactly the same as putting a into there because reference is just an alias. What we can also do is change the value of the variable linked by that reference. The way that we're going to do this is just the same as what I showed you earlier. So what we're going to be doing is setting reference equal to and then 22 and then we're going to end off this statement. So because this is a reference what it's going to be doing is changing the value of a to whatever we are defining down here which is 22. So if I was to go ahead and do that and then once again print a onto the screen what you're going to see is the value of a is going to change from 69 to 22 on our screen and you are going to be able to see our function is doing this. Now you'll notice there I've got an error that's just because I didn't copy my code properly but go ahead and run this through the local debugger and you are going to be able to see that the value of a is going to change using the power of references. So it starts off at 69 and then it goes to 22. In addition to referencing a reference in this way, what we can also do is put a reference through a function. So having said that, what I'm going to do is take advantage of my quick maths function that we created previously. So what I'm going to do is call that quick maths function by typing in quick maths and then the two pieces of data that I'm going to be feeding into this is going to be a and also our reference. So essentially what this is going to be doing here is just multiplying a 
by A because reference is a reference to A. Once you've called your function here, make sure you end off that statement with a semicolon and then go ahead and run this through the local Windows debugger. What's going to happen then is you are going to see it is going to do exactly what you'd expect it to. It is going to multiply the value of A by A because reference is just a link to A and you can see it's done that here, 484, which is at the time 22 by 22 because as you can see in our code here the value of a is currently set to 22. Using references as part of your code as opposed to a pointer can be a lot cleaner semantically. This is something that you're going to see as we go deeper through this series as we start to write some more advanced code. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video on references and understand the difference between pointers and references. If you're having a little bit of trouble understanding the difference, do make sure you go ahead and watch that pointers video if you haven't done so already. That is everything for today's video. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.